Hello and a very good afternoon here from the airport of New York JFK. My name is Robin and I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this new video of mine. I'm here in New York to fly with Cathay Pacific on their fifth freedom flight to Vancouver. We're flying in first class. I'm so excited. I have really been looking out for this flight for a long time. But I figured that since we're here in New York, we might as well take a look at the TWA hotel here at the, at the airport. So let's go inside to the TWA hotel, then onto the American Airlines flagship lounge, and then onto Vancouver with Cathay Pacific. So please, come with me. The TWA hotel is located right by Terminal 5 of JFK Airport and is easily accessible with the air train. This is true 8 gig heaven and if you ever find yourself in New York, I recommend you make a stop by the hotel. Transworld Airlines opened the TWA flight center in 1962 and used this as the main passenger terminal up until the airline ceased operations in 2001. After being vacant for almost 20 years, I'm really happy that it's restored to its full glory as the TWA hotel. Staying here is not cheap. A night easily costs you over 200 US dollars and for a little extra, you can get a room with a runway view. However, a lot of the areas in the hotel are accessible for free, even if you're not staying overnight. There's a lot to see here, really too much to show in this video today. But something truly amazing that you don't see often is this Lockheed constellation in the backyard of the TWA hotel. Connie was originally delivered to Transworld Airlines in April of 1958, where it has really only flown for two years. Now, with a rich history, the aircraft has been renovated and repurposed as a cocktail lounge and museum prop. You can go inside and peek inside the cockpit, or you can sit down and have yourself a slightly expensive cocktail poured, but it's all for the experience. My favorite part of the TWA hotel is probably that two scenes of my favorite movie, Catch Me If You Can, are recorded in a terminal building here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, for the information of those passengers arriving on American Airlines flight 2731 from Charlotte. I had come to the airport really early, but the check-in desks don't open until three and a half hours before the flight. Luckily, I was able to check in online and get a digital boarding pass on my phone, something that usually never works when I book an international one-way flight. After spending almost an hour to get through security, I went straight to the American Airlines flagship lounge, where I was led into the flagship first dining room. I was seated on a table with a view on the ramp and the skyline of New York City, where I eventually got to spend four hours just enjoying the aircraft in the sunset. Flagship dining is a la carte dining, but everything you order is free. And they have a really impressive drinks list too. If you want to follow all my trips just like this one while they happen or see things that don't make it into the video, you can follow me on social media like Instagram and Twitter, for which you can find the links in the description below.
I use this as an opportunity to try different things I usually wouldn't order and it really paid off. The food is delicious here, the presentation fantastic and the view is even better. I almost forgot that I still had to take a flight where I would be fed again, so I ordered dessert with an after dinner drink and a coffee. And all this time, I pretty much had the entire place to myself. But eventually, the aircraft for the 5 hour flight to Vancouver arrived and had to get ready to go to the gate. That aircraft is a 6 year old Boeing 777-300ER that was delivered to Cathay Pacific in August of 2013. Well, that was the American Airlines flagship first dining experience here at New York JFK. Uh, airport and I have to say it's a fantastic experience the food is amazing the service is great as well I really liked it you have a great view on the ramp and with the skyline of New York City in the background it's fantastic and you know what I have to thank my buddy Billy from the YouTube channel Gilbert Travels for all this because he gave me some great tips and he was actually the one who told me that this route was going to be discontinued so if I wanted to fly it I had to be quick so without him I wouldn't be here today so I will link a, his channel Billy Gilbert Travels here in the top right corner so do give him a subscribe as well if you get the chance but for now it's time to board our Boeing 777 to Vancouver so please come with me to the gate. First class passengers are among the first to board the aircraft. A drink, some nuts, a hot towel and the menu are delivered and a member of the crew introduced herself. This is going to be a great flight. I was in suite 1A today and the lights indicate whether you have do not disturb enabled. These seats are huge, have three windows and can turn into full flat beds. There are no overhead storage bins here but you get a personal storage compartment that is big enough for a carry-on suitcase. The video screen is large, it's with 18 and a half inch bigger than what British Airways have in their first class. The seat features a single power socket and a USB port and comes with a pair of Bose noise cancelling headphones. The remote for the in-flight entertainment is one you see featured in many aircraft now. The seat recline and massage function can be controlled with another touchscreen. The tray table is very large. And since the Ottoman also features a seatbelt, you can choose to dine together with a travel companion.
All the common reading material are stowed in the side, including the instructions for the Wi-Fi, which incidentally is free for passengers in first class. The suite offers a reading light on each side of the seat and an extra wide armrest. Not only do you get an amenity kit on the flight, but you also get a pair of very comfortable pajamas, even on this short flight. Cathay Pacific used to have a 9 abreast economy class, but has moved to 201 seats in a more narrow 3-4-3 configuration in the recent years. In front of economy you can find a small selection of 34 seats in premium economy. They're wider, have a better recline and a food rest, but still in a 2-4-2 configuration. The surface level is also higher than in coach. Then there are 53 full flight business class seats. And since the plane was pretty much empty, I tried one out for myself and they're really comfortable. My first experience with Cathay Pacific was back in 2018 when I flew on British Airways first class and I dined in the Cathay Pacific first class lounge at Heathrow. Their food was so fantastic, I couldn't wait to try some more. I started with two international dishes, the tuna tataki and a soup which came with a basket of bread rolls. Honestly, eating soup on a plane with a white shirt is dangerous. I also had one of the Chinese dishes that came with jasmine rice. At this point I couldn't eat anything anymore, but somehow the crew still convinced me to have dessert. Wow! At this point we were about halfway through the flight and I decided to sit back, relax and explore the seat options. At the same time, the cabin was darkened and I started getting sleepy. I requested turn on service and used one of the lavatories to change into the supplied pajamas. Those washrooms, by the way, are incredible. Instead of paper towels, you dry your hands with real towels. And when I came back to my seat, it was turned into a full bed and I had two hours of the best sleep on an airplane I have ever had.
This is the point of the video where I had originally recorded an outro for, but since taking this flight just two months ago, things have really taken a turn and things have gone really downhill fast for Cathay Pacific. It was known already that they were going to close their fifth freedom flight between Vancouver and New York and that was the whole point of why I was taking this flight in the first place. And just a week after I took that flight, Cathay Pacific announced that they were going to close the route even earlier than originally planned. And more recently, just two days ago, they announced that they were going to close the base in Vancouver entirely, potentially losing 150 jobs. 25,000 people have asked to take three weeks of unpaid leave. A large amount of their fleet is currently grounded and thousands of flights have been cancelled. Things don't really look good for Cathay Pacific, so this would have been the point where I usually would have told you how fantastic this flight was and how I recommend you taking this flight and how I would definitely do this again. But that is really not a time and place to say this at the moment. I would much rather close the video today saying that I wish all the folks who work for Cathay Pacific the best and that they're going to make it through and that, you're, that the airline is going to make it out of this situation. So that's all. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, please subscribe to the channel. And otherwise, see you next week.